Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today I have my Maxon t-shirt on, finally, because I forgot it's in my wardrobe, and you get it for free if you watch the Maxon training team on YouTube. There's a lot of useful information about Cinema 4D and Redshift, and they also give away the free t-shirt. Anyway, today we're talking about material layer, and I wanna talk about uh, how we can use it to apply our logos to our designs. You can use it to blend any materials together, and it's a new simplified version of the Material Blender, so I wanna talk about that. We're gonna use new node system, and we we're also going to look at how to do it more extensively in a shader graph using my new material pack, my fabrics. So uh, I'm going to be selling it a little. Let's do this. Welcome to Cinema 4D S26 and I want to talk about first a note editor. So in Redshift, if you go to preferences, you can tick option note materials for presets. That means that if you create a new material, it won't open the shader graph, but you, you will double click your materials and it will give you the material properties and option to go into node editor instead of shader graph. So I'm going to dock it in and we're going to look how node editor behaves. And the first thing you notice, it's very friendly on to your wrist. If you've been spending working with materials for a long time, the shader graph can be very tedious in, you know, it's hard to pipe in stuff. It's uh, causing a lot of wrist pain because you have to kind of zoom in and try to virus properly. And, and it's really difficult while Note editor is very UI friendly. So I, I really like that it's very easy to plug stuff in and you don't have to worry about everything is the same size. You can reduce the size of your node. So once you're building larger scenes, then you can make it smaller. If you don't need to see the previews, then you can turn off the previews. And also if you have the material and you right click, um, I mean the control click any options on here, then you can make it appear into onto your material which is i think cool feature but i want to talk about bringing material layer and so i double click into empty space and i'm going to bring material layer this is a new node that is simplified version of material blender which has up to six codes but this one has only one layer with some blend types like over combine and add i'm gonna have the standard material hold control drag it so I have two versions of those material and one of them, I'm going to make them, uh, make it red and one of them, I'm going to make it blue. So I have a red and blue purple and plug it into our material layer. So red one goes onto material layer. I plug it as a base material color out of the blue one, go into the material layer and select it as a layer color one. So now, because it's in over mode, it's layering blue over the red one. Now I can plug this material layer onto the surface and then create plane. So I have a plane, I'm gonna make it 600 and 300. And the reason why I'm making it this size is because the texture I'm gonna be using is exactly the same proportion. And I'm gonna bring this fabric that is uh, 1200 to 600 um, and just drag it over onto my editor and I can see the texture HKA fabrics um, here. So I'm gonna place it here and I'm gonna double click the empty space and bring in color splitter. So color splitter can look at my PNG separate the layers like uh, RGB layers and also the alpha. And I say, I want this alpha and we'll plug it into the blue material and into the geometry properties into opacity. So the alpha will be into opacity and it immediately sees my PNG and applying that blue color only to that PNGs. Now this make it very easy for us to apply logos to our designs in case you have more difficult object to you will have to UV map or UV project onto the surface. But when it comes to something like fabric, it's very easy to do. I'm going to also show you how to do it on the fabric because I've built my materials uh, to be backward compatible with uh, different versions. So you can, uh, that's why I build them in a shader graph and uh, we're going to look at how to do it in shader graph. It's basically the same, but I feel like it's much more clear 
uh, to look at when we do it in the note editor. So it's one of the reasons why I will embrace it in the future and start working with the new note editor. Now let's have a look how we would go about it using our shader graph. So I've changed the settings in the Redshift uh, preferences back to uh, shader graph by uh, unticking the node materials for preset. So now when I uh, create new material, it will offer me the shader graph. But anyway, I've built all my fabric materials uh, from my new pack that is here, HK Fabrics, and you can watch the video above uh, if you want to find out more about this pack. I've built it in a shader graph anyway, so it's backward compatible. And I'm going to bring in plane and I'm going to make it 600 by 300 and also proportionally bring in segments. So 100 segments in width and 50 in height. So we have a nice even mesh and I'm going to apply the purple days material to it to have it correctly scaled because it's a it's a double the size and width and height. So then we can click on the material and make length U 50%. And this way it scales properly. With that done, I'm just going to open the purple days. And this is where I build the materials. And I'm just going to move it a little bit up. And I'm going to bring in a new material. And I'm also going to bring, bring material layer. So new material. See, that's, that's what's difficult about shader graph. <laughs> just resizing and piping in. I'm going to bring in texture and I'm also bring the color splitter and I'm going to apply texture for our logo to our texture node and pipe it into color splitter and get that alpha information again into our material and go to overall opacity color. So this way the alpha goes into opacity color. So when I plug this into layer as a layer color, it will layer over our original material. So I'm going to pipe that one in as a base. So we have a fabric as a base and then the layer color logo on top of it, plug it into the output and we're going to have our logo on here. But logo is not scaled properly because we as well, we don't want to wrap U and UV. We just want to have it once there. And now I'm just going to have to uh, make it just so it fits nicely our, oh, not this way, just so it fits nicely our fabric. Okay, so we have it scaled. What I can do now, I can change the color of this material, right? Or I can bring in textures from my new pack. So if I go to the projects, I can go to the Gumroad and I bring these I'm going to bring the roughness and uh, diffused, just those two, it's fine. Then going to pipe in diffuse into properties, diffuse color, and then the reflection roughness, I'm just going to pipe into reflection, reflection roughness. So I have some kind of basic properties for our second material, and then I can go into our fabric and I set up these nodes so quickly, color correct, so I can desaturate it to make it kind of grayish and immediately get that look that you saw on the thumbnail. If I zoom in, you see that that fabric's kind of okay, but it just kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't sit there yet. So the thing you can do, you can bring in bump, bump map and raise the gummy texture so it sits a little bit so it has some kind of thickness so i've created another texture for this and it's um if i go to textures random and but it's a blurred version of black and white uh, logo and it's a little bit blurred because the bump doesn't like sharp edges so i'm just going to bring this and bring our bump input i mean bump map and pipe in texture input and go into the bump input. And now we see it's kind of raised, but it's a little bit off. So same thing again, we're going to have to rescale it 
as we did for our first one and now it sits uh, so we half the size because it's a it's a you know it's a 600 by 300 so we need to half the width so it sits exactly on our logo so now when we did this we can combine the bump map we can also make it less obvious so i'm just gonna go 0 0.2 just make it just ever so slightly and it still doesn't sit so what we can do we can take the bump input from that initial material so you see those ridges i don't know what you say but you 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 can take this bump input and bring in another bl blender so i'm just going to copy this blender over here and take this input from our fabric and pipe it into the bump input zero and this one pipe into bump input one go to that blender now i have the layer zero layer one pipe it at the bump input of the second material and it will it will get the bump from that so if i'm just gonna reduce reduce you see i, I kind of get a blend of that rays but also get the displacement of our second uh, of our material of our fabric so this way it sits and it looks more believable now if i want to make this fabric actually like crumble like you see in a thumbnail then we apply the simulation cloth tag and i have my default settings right here so bendiness 20 stretchiness 100 mass 0 0.3 and quad diagonals go double and now i'm going to apply redshift object tag go to geometry tessellation on and i can activate my turbulence so turbulence setting is nine in strength and scale is 1500 and i have a spherical field which is very small and affecting just a piece of the fabric so it will crumble only in that one space now i'm going to turn off the ipr and see i'm getting i'm getting a nice crumble of that fabric but it's still very rigid so the next thing i can do i can go and apply the geometry node uh, po polygons apply to our plane so you see the mesh is divided even more and the, the final thing i can do to it is to bring in cloth surface and apply to our plane too so i'm going to make it a child and now uh, it's even more subdivided and i can bring in also some kind of thickness uh, to our cloth it should be much more realistic yes so we have our logo applied to our fabric we raise it with bump and we also applied a bump blender to blend these nicely together and now make nice crumble with cloth surface poke polygons and turbulence uh, my scene setting for simulation is uh, gravity zero and uh, sub steps 20 you can increase the sub steps iteration um i can I, th I think i have the preset for this but you can go sub steps 30 iteration you know four and run it again whenever you increase iteration it's just gonna kind of i can move the spherical field affect the fabric even in more places and now when it's crumbled nicely, I can have a look again through the IPR and take a nice look at the logo. So if you are interested in, in the fabric pack and, and to get these kind of fabrics, um, check my Gumroad. Uh, I priced it $299, which is, I think, very, very friendly. And the other thing uh, we can do as well uh, to this is uh, to go to the camera, enable the bokeh and just kind of can do the focus distance focus on this part increase the radius or decrease it to like four and now i have a nice depth of field 
can use bokeh image for this as well. This is a new update from yesterday. So if I if I do the HDR link plus, click on the camera and drag in that image onto the HDR link, I'm gonna get this nice bokeh image. Open the plus library, go to the bokeh, double click different bokeh, 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 bleh. Increase the intensity of our dome light. It's became very dark. And to, to get some more realistic, you know, bokeh as well. It's very interesting to see, you know, how quickly we can pull these effects. Okay, so I think that's very nice. And, and I hope you like this tutorial. Thank you for watching, guys, and see you in the next one.